Hello and welcome to the first edition of Journalist Hangout. This week, I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Today, we'll be looking at the emergence of Rotimi Akere Dulu as the Ondo State Governor-elect. Babajide Koladu, Titoju, and Asuko James are on set for the show. Journalist Hangout starts now. Of course, by now you know it is official. Rotimi Akere Dulu is the Ondo State Governor-elect. He emerged after a thinly contested election in the state on Saturday, November the 26th. The candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, beat two other major contenders, Eita Ojegede of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and Olu Sholauke of the Alliance for Democracy, AD. Akere Dolu won 14 out of 18 local government areas with a total of 244,842 votes. Meanwhile, Olushe Gumimiko's former deputy, Ali Olanusi, has said that APC won Saturday's election in Ondo State through the immense assistance of, of former chieftains of the PDP who defected to the APC. Gentlemen, do you agree? By the way, welcome to the program, Babajide, Koladi Utitoju, and Asuko James. So, Jide, you want to go first? Um, Akere Dolu won through the emergence of the immense assistance, borrowing the words of Ali Olanusi. Yeah, of course, um, they contributed a lot, no doubt about it. And I think the one that actually shocked me was the the defection of the last um, PDP senator. You know, a few days to the election, I think less than three days to the election, the last PDP senator from Mondo State defected to the APC. And I thought that was really, really significant because you need all those um, big people on election day. They are good at mobilizing. They have their um, foot soldiers. Then you can actually rely on those foot soldiers to get to all parts of the state, mobilize people, get people out to come and vote because it really <coughs> matters a lot. If you cannot get people out significantly on election day, no matter the level of goodwill that you have, you may not do well. What you do on election day is very, very crucial to um, your performance uh, in the election overall. Uh, but if you also look at the role that Jimo Ibrahim played, uh, Jimo played the role of a PDP member who had defected to the APC. I don't think that uh, even an APC member could have done better because he said something that he achieved his aim of keeping Governor Mimeko out of the state for three for weeks. Three weeks. Everyone knows that uh, when it comes to grassroots politics, that uh, Lucia Mimeko is very, very strong. Even Obasanjo, I remember before the, um, I think, 2000 and. 2008 election, 2000, yes, 2008 election. Uh, the election I brought Mimiko to office. The person just went to campaign there, and people were screaming, Iroko, Iroko, Iroko. And he said, ah, Why are you people screaming, Iroko? Iroko resides in the bush. <laughs> and he said, Well, at that time, Mimeko was uh, a, a minister in Obasanjo's cabinet, and Obasanjo said, well, we are going to send the EFCC after him. That tells you something that Obasanjo is the living god of impunity in Nigeria. For him, because somebody became popular, you said, okay, you will send the EFCC after him. That it was minister of, uh, was it minister of housing? Labor? Housing. Or housing, yes. Housing. Yeah. You know? So, Mimeko, as a grassroots politician, is, is very strong. So, according to Jimo Ibrahim, he succeeded in getting him out of the state for three weeks because if he was around to fully concentrate on mobilizing his supporters for Jegede, it would have been difficult to defeat him. But he spent all of the last few weeks of the election, you know, in Abuja, trying uh, meeting with pre the president, trying to get. Uh, his guy to win the, the the legal battle and all that, so he couldn't really focus on the big task of mobilizing and preparing sufficiently for the for the election. So that's the role that someone 
who belongs to the PDP played. Don't also forget on election day, Jim Ibrahim came out to say that the agents, mm -hmm. the that uh, Jagger's agents were agents that he appointed, that he appointed, which was the fear of the Jagger group all along. That look, we need enough time for this election so that we can put our agents in, in the thousands of uh, polling uh, centers across the state. You know, but clearly they didn't have time. They may have submitted a list, but Jimmo boasted that it was his own agents that served as Jagger's agents in the election. His own agents as, as the mm -hmm. PDP uh, initial candidate. Uh -huh. from yes. Mimikos. So, meaning that they will not be able to work wholeheartedly for Jagger. Because when you now, uh, the party, has been divided in the state. You bring people who do not fully believe in the candidate to serve as agents of the candidate. There is no way that they will be able to work wholeheartedly for him. There are certain things that they will see and they will just overlook. Whereas if your agent is lawyer, maybe they are trying to bribe voters, you will complain. Mm. But these are some of the issues. But basically, the, the PDP government in Ondo State was the architect of his own misfortune. Because if you also look at uh, the issue of the welfare of workers, if tying it back now, if we can say that the last time that um, on those state workers got paid was April. Because remember, uh, they, they, they fought the government, they even went on strike for, for some time. Now, if they are still being owed several months and if you calculate it is it, it effectively comes to april that they were paid last mm -hmm. it will be difficult for them a, a hungry man is an angry man yes <laughs> and then someone comes to say look i offer a better alternative to a government that has made you to suffer so i think that for jagada in spite of that problem to still get the votes that he got with the anger in the land with, with the hunger in the land mm -hmm. i think that um, uh, he did well but Mimiko, um, it's like the proverbia. Uh, <coughs> it reminds me of the uh, Yoruba proverb that a dete ole funwara, but ole dawaran. <laughs> Mimiko cannot win an election. He's not a politician of notes. He's not a politician of value. Oh, you but, mean, um, yeah, I mean Ibra Ibrahim uh, now? Jimo Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Uh, I take it back. Jimo Ibrahim is not a politician of notes. He cannot win an election since. 2003, when he, he, he made his foray into Nigerian politics, he has not done anything significant. But at least he has shown us that he can damage someone's political ambition. Chances. So that's exactly the role that he has played in this election. And he even announced, he said, I've achieved my aim. <laughs> he didn't want Mimiko to get uh, his boy to succeed. And he, and he effectively, appeared to have succeeded. Uh, yes, he, he succeeded. So... Uh, we give it to him mm. as the modern day spoiler. Mm. I, I really want us to look at another statement he made recently, which is a, a worthy of note. But let's look at 2012 election result uh, side by side with um, the result of um, 2016 that saw Akiri Dolu's emergence. Uh, the Labour Party, uh, Mimiko was the candidate, then got 260,197 votes. The PDP uh, came behind with a, a hundred and. 55,961 votes, while the Action Congress of Nigeria at that time, who was represented by Rutsumi Akiridulu, managed to pull 143,512 votes. It appears as, as if history is repeating itself. It's the same pattern of election results that we're having in 2016. Asuko, what do you attribute to this? Well, definitely, this is how it has to be played. Um, it has to you know, play out. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at it, um, I know I covered the election back then, four years ago, in um, in Ondo. Ondo. and um, then just like um, um, Jude said, B BKO. It was more like the person that was on ground, and Mimiko was on ground, even though then he was owing um, salaries, but he was able to clear the salaries before, before the, the election. election. In fact, so the eve, the eve exactly, of the election. Exactly. So, so many people, he, he quickly endeared to people's hearts and they said, okay, since that he's already working, let's just give him this vote and let him continue with the work. But this um, year, that is 2016, was a different scene entirely. 
he was battling with so many things. He was battling with um, salaries. He was battling with um, the the judiciary, mm -hmm. and he was also battling with the with the people. In that the Undo people that I know don't like God for that reason, you know. So there are so many things that we are against him. And if you look at it, if you look at even the, the number of votes all through, if you look at the total number of votes, it is not as um, significant as what was. Um, it wasn't decisive. Eh, exactly. Even in the know, favor of APC. Eh, exactly. This year. You know, yes, if you look at the numbers, the I numbers are not very look at much. One criticism of Memeko back then, which even Jibon uh, talked about, was the fact that majority of the people didn't elect him. In this case, you will see clearly too that majority, majority of, of the voters on the day didn't elect Akere Dolu. We'll begin to look at why that is, but that will be after the break. You're watching JH. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Glad to have you back. You're watching Journalist Hangout on TVC, and we're looking at the emergence of Rutimi Akere Dolu as the governor-elect of Ondo State. Now we're joined by Lekon Shote. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. We're looking at uh, 2012 result and 2016 election result, which happens to be uh, very similar in numbers, even in distribution to uh, the candidates then and mm -hmm. the candidates now. And yeah. Jude, you were telling us why that seems to be so. Yes, why sir. the majority did not elect the winner then and now. I'm saying that the, the criticism um, of people who did not want Mimiko at that time was that majority of the voters on election day didn't elect Mimiko. It's the same thing that has happened today. I mean, uh, on, Saturday. on Saturday. If you look at, if you tally the votes recorded by the AD. Olusha Lauke of AD, 126,889, you tally it with what the PDP candidate got. Um, no, with Jagede, the PDP candidate, mm. 150,380. The votes recorded by both of them cumulatively is higher than what Jagede, um, um, I mean, um, Akiri Dolu got. So it's like history repeating itself now. But our law does not say that the, the, the uh, quantum of the votes must come to you. It's a simple majority that we are talking about now. As long as you have the spread mm -hmm. across the local governments that make up the state, you are duly elected. Mm -hmm. So history has been repeated. So even if you win by just one vote mm -hmm. over yes. the, you are the second winner. runner, you, you are, are the, the winner. winner. But I'm sure that some people will still come and talk about the same, um, the way it has panned out uh, this time around, that majority of the, the voters on election day. Mm. Didn't elect him. Uh, now, Lekon, does that suggest that, um, well, m let, me, let me phrase it this way Akere Dulu did not win because it's popular, but because of external factors? Um, actually, I thought about it, but not from this angle. I thought to myself, if Olusha had remained in APC and there was cooperation mm. between the two of them, it would have been a rout. It would have been a moonslide. Almost 400,000 like voters compared to um, the PDP vote. That was mm -hmm. what I was thinking of. So when I'm, when Jide was talking, now, I'm like, okay, he has thought about what I'm thinking, but I'm looking at a completely different um, angle. So which means that when you play your politics, you have to be careful not to split your vote. The same way the PDP split uh, you may say, well, okay, Mr. Jim Ibrahim did not contest at the end of the day, but I'm sure he played um, the role of maybe confusing. A spoiler. Um, mm -hmm. A spoiler. Yeah, mm -hmm. and people were like, if these guys are not going to be um, organized, and let me tell you something. APC, in spite of the fact that Mr. Odisho Laoke went to AD, mm -hmm. and the fact that Dr. Abraham went to court, you, there was no rhetoric, there was no campaign from the, even those who did not approve of Akere Lulu within APC. Mm -hmm. There was no negative no. campaign against them. They didn't openly work against them. They didn't openly work and, against and, them. And they didn't 
openly work for him if you're talking about yeah, Abraham. Yeah, no, no, I recall no. Abraham saying that uh, the APC supporters should vote their conscience. conscience. Uh -huh. You can go ahead. You know, so which, which helps you to come to the conclusion that uh, somebody in APC was wise enough to look at at the end of the day, what is important is for us to win this. And I'm glad that you know that Jagaban has actually congratulated Akire Dolu. And there was a statement he made about unity. unity. Mm -hmm. And that is what worked for them. Mm -hmm. That they did not start go about uh, destroying each other. I like to imagine, what is the difference between Akire Dolu 270 something and uh, AD 126? It's about 110 thousand. Do you understand? If... No, Akira Dolu is actually 244. 244. Okay, so you are looking at about uh, uh, about half of that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but you know, so if that... It's not up to half. It's not up to half. Just a, a, a little over... A little over... 100,000. 100,000. Okay. 100, mm -hmm. Now, if this 126 has swung to a well-organized PDP, what do you think would have happened? Mm. It had been a serious problem for if there was going to be a tally, then you're not going to have a runoff or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So it's important that um, a political party understands very quickly when to put the brakes, even when you disagree within your the party. Fold. And I think uh, APC needs to be commended I think mm. for uh, 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 I think that despite the crisis, uh, they are, uh, that arose the from the acrimonious primaries of okay. the party. The some of uh, those who lost the primaries okay. worked for him. Yeah. People like Kumba and the rest of they worked right. for him. Right. And some of them who were not happy, right. somehow did not still, work against him. Still worked for him. Okay. Though they did not openly, openly show it, show it. Yeah. because I remember that. Akre Dolu continued to say that Ashiwaju is supporting is, is with me. Yeah, he kept that saying that. I spoke with yeah, him. That's right. He's supporting me. He keeps, he keeps saying so that, yes. There is nowhere that it is recorded that Ashiwaju publicly told his supporters not no, to no, support no, him. Not to support him. And now that you have mentioned Ashiwaju, um, he has congratulated Akiri Dolu. Yeah. Yes. What does that say about the perception that in this election he has been isolated or perhaps? He, he was supporting Ulu Shalauki. Well, let, let me try and say something. Uh, who was it that um, thought Jagaban should have um, supported him in APC? And Abraham. 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 You know. No. When Jagaban openly supported Abraham, Abraham. Yes. I think it was okay who said, I, I would have thought that you would be on my side. And Jagaban wrote a letter and said, I am a free agent within this party. Okay. Yes. You are talking about uh, that lawyer. No? Yeah, the other chap. Um, forgot his name now. Tun, uh, Tunji Tunji Abayomi. Tunji, thank you. Tunji Abayomi. Lawyer. Yes. It's, uh, I'm free. Yeah, that's right. I'm free to be. I'm a free agent. I can choose. Regardless of whether I'm a national leader or I'm an officer of the party, it doesn't matter. The point is that as an individual, I am free to want to back anybody that I want to back. And I think that is what has uh, quite played out uh, this time around. People have made up their mind which way they want to go. Mm. And they have gone that way, you know. And then when they now saw that the chips are down, everybody comes back to do the right thing. And I think... Asuko, uh, any brief thoughts on that? No, I think it because um, it, when we saw this um, statement yesterday, I, I knew that Jagaban actually was playing behind the scene in that he doesn't need to come out to come and tell people this is who I'm endorsing. I think he would have sat behind and said, okay, fine, um, I can't break this party. This is my baby. Why should I you know, they want to be the one to you know, scatter it's, this it's party? It's too big for that. Yeah. It's too big for that. And so when people are always saying, ah, he's supporting um, Olushala, okay, Olushala, I said, this man can't do that because he has taken years for him to come to this level. Yeah. Not just 16 good years for him to bring up APC, for him to come and stay in APC, fighting battles. And for him to now say, okay, at the end of the day, okay, I'm not supporting um, I want to destroy because I want to destroy the house that I built. It, it doesn't look well. So behind he would have been saying okay fine this is our party 
Yes, we might have our differences, yeah. but I know this is we are going for a battle, and that is how a, a, poli a good politician thinks. Mm -hmm. You know, you know when you fight your battles. You know when you come back and say, okay, fine, yeah. mm -hmm. um, okay, I've realized my mistake, but let's go for this war. After this war, we'll mend fences, mm -hmm. and uh, that is what he has done with that statement that I saw yesterday, and which is highly commendable. And, uh, I, I'm, I'm curious about okay, your thoughts, okay. GD, but let's take a break. You're watching GH. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hundreds of Wondo residents took to the streets to celebrate the victory of the candidate of the All Progressives Congress following INEX declaration of Rotemi Akire Dolu as the governor elect of the state. Now, I see this today as a pleasure day in my life to everybody and everybody in Ondo State because we are we, we want free and fair election in Ondo State and we see that we expect and that is the why we see. All women in the market, we all are feeling happy. This is that we don't want six o'clock midnight to be coming to market. We see that other way will be stopped for our new government. So I'm very happy today. Oh, yeah. I particular, I'm very happy. I, I'm very, 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 very so happy because um, the Undo state are already corrupt. Hey. But we know that the only um, what you mean, or do I your accurate hey. only son, the only the person can do the Undo state oh, to yeah. be better. Undolites were ecstatic and danced round the metropolis waving the broom, the symbol of the All Progressives Congress. Most of them who spoke with TVC News expressed their delight with the conduct of the violence-free election. They added that their joy knows no bound now that their preferred candidate has been declared winner. Now that change appears to have arrived, the Sunshine State, the people of Ondo State seem to have a long list of expectations for the governor-elect. I want him to pay salary and create job for unemployment job people in Ondo State. We want youth employment. Unlike the present government that is, you know, closing its high to, to the youth. There should be bringing light. And you should build the school and you should do everything very well. We need light, water. We don't need water in the transition. We need it physically. And we don't need light in the transition. We don't need street lights. We need house where we need street. So we are all happy. We pray to God for our government, you know, to attain to listen to, to graduate crime. Because we were crying bitterly, we have nothing doing. But the excellency, uh, our Ruth Miakredolu, he has promised us a lot that he's going to provide a job to us. With the anxiety concerning who will be their next governor over, the people of Ondo State look forward to four years of fulfilled promises. Jokeli Jadu, TVC News, Akure. <laughs> The people of Ondo State there in the camp of the All Progressives Congress rejoicing following the emergence of Rutimia Kiridulu. Let's hope that uh, that love affair doesn't turn sour in the next three months. one or two so years. It's, it's, it's always I, three I months. Think three months. has a lot to do because if you look at um, the people of the South, the um, Okutikukpa people, they said they've not had light for more than two years. I think close to five years. They've not had light. You know, so first it has to find a way to give them electricity. That is number one. Then number two, youth. So many of them are already complaining that they don't have jobs. So it has to provide employment. This afternoon he was saying something about industry. So he, all the major industries have to be revived. And youth... That's the way employment that is the can first, be generated. Exactly. Then we know, I remember, he was also saying something about keying in into the federal government um, policy, which is the APC policy of the free um, feeding program. Yeah. That is another way you can also create employment, you know. So, and then agriculture, it was particular about agriculture. On those states, it's fatal. So there's, there's, he has a job cut out for him. He has so many things. The expectation is very, very high. So he needs to sit down, have a, a, a team that understands the problem of the people and tackle them one after the other for him to succeed. The um, salaries, it will be very, I don't know how he wants to surmount that problem <laughs> because who in for a government, a government to hold for six months, seven months, seven. is a very big problem. So he has to also sit down with the civil servant and find a way of 
trying to appease them and telling them, okay, this is what is left in the coffers. This is what I can, you know, give you for now. And then in the next couple of months, you know, like a sharing formula sort of, you know, for him to make everybody happy. I, I want to believe if he has a good team, he should be able to succeed. Hopefully. We have <coughs> Ibrahim from Taraba. Hello, Ibrahim. You're welcome to the Hi. program. Hi, it's Ibrahim. Good afternoon, people. Hello? Hello. Good evening. I, 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 I doing good. Uh, may God bless uh, this TV, uh, TV station. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Uh, thank you for that conversation. Thank you. That's all. That's all. Thank you, Ibrahim. <laughs> okay. Now, some of the things, you know, said by uh, those celebrating in uh, Kiridu Luz camp, they're, they're quite instructive. I recall the woman talking about um, them needing light and water in their homes, not on television. Not on television. Uh, Jide, nobody believed that the Iroko of Wondo politics could be uprooted, but he has been uprooted. What are the lessons that Mimiko will take away from um, what has transpired in Wondo State in the last three days or so? Well, um, when the people are on your side, you must do your best for them. You must not for once let them down or brush them aside. I think that in recent times, there has not been any politician of the stature of Rusegu Mimiko in, um, in Ondo State. He was much more popular than even the later Gago. Mm -hmm. you know? So, but you can't take the goodwill that the people freely gave you for granted. And if there are problems, those problems must be solved. I think for a long time, many people thought that Mimiko would pay salaries at the last minute. They didn't know that this problem was, was big and that Mimiko would have had no reason to keep people's salaries with the intention of releasing it to them on the eve of an election. So he should have found a way to solve that salary problem. We still have states in Nigeria that are not owing salary. Kano State is one, is one of the biggest states in Nigeria. Kano State is not owing salaries. Kano State is not owing salaries. Anambra State is not owing salaries. It's the biggest state in the southeast. So how are some states able to do it? Taraba continues to pay salaries. Gombe State, where we have the former Accountant General of Nigeria as governor, continues to pay salaries consistently, regularly. Zamfara is not owing salaries. So how are some states able to do it that you couldn't do it? If you couldn't pay salaries for various reasons, then you must, you must call the civil servant and tell them this is the situation. I can afford only 50%. That is what the governor of Bahesa State has done. Seria K. Dixon. People insult Seria K. Dixon that oh, uh, oil producing state, uh, you cannot pay. But it's not, it didn't cost it. It was silver that took hefty loans, the former governor, took hefty loans that the state is now forced to pay every month, to service every month. So how do, what do you, what's the miracle that you expect from Dixon? Dixon is one of the most frugal governors in Nigeria, but he is unable to pay salaries regularly. So he told the people, look, I can afford only 50%. Take it from me. When things improve, of course I will be able to pay you people. That's what he has done in Bayesa. So, Mimiko should not have allowed this situation to degenerate to this extent in an election year. Because that was what caused uh, the PDP to lose Plateau State. Some of the states, <coughs> even Benway. Benway. Yeah, exactly. Even Benway, where some teachers even committed suicide mm. because they were being owed up to nine months. Some schools were shut. So, this uh, salary thing. You will say civil servants are only an infinitesimal percentage of the population, but they have dependents. And if we do not take civil servants, if we do not treat them fairly, what will go out that is you are a bad a, governor? A ricochet exactly. effect. Yeah. What will go out? People out there will say, oh, he's a bad governor, this and that. So it's a lesson that he has learned. And the other lesson is that when you have a group, you must, you must do your best to, to keep that group together. He joined the PDP. Many people were not happy that he joined the PDP. And some of those aggrieved guys remained in his party. You know? 
So he didn't do his best to hold them together because if he had done his best, some of those who defected would not have defected. He also couldn't keep even the Labour Party members who defected to the APC. He couldn't keep them. Yes, you are a big political figure within the party, but you cannot behave like the only fish in the pond. You must hold people together. Too many, uh, uh, he made too many political enemies within his group, from Labour to PDP. So many people defected because of him. So now, that has cost him uh, his, his uh, dream of supplanting himself with his, uh, with his, uh, yeah. with his boy, in a vertical <laughs> coma. Uh, All right, we have another caller. Hello, Olawale. Olawale, good evening. Hello. Hello, Olawale. Hello, 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 hello. Yes, you're on to Journalist <coughs> Hangout. Let's have your contribution. Uh, but, uh, Wemima has not left. Okay. Okay, good evening, Wemima. Good evening. Yeah, uh, It appears we may have lost that uh, call. Olawale, please uh, make another attempt. We'll be ready to take your call. Yeah. Liko, you have any thoughts on um, Mimiko being, the Roko being up uprooted? I'm going to say that I wasn't quite surprised at the turn of events. Sometime last year, uh, around June, when the House of Assembly was being inaugurated, I was there for a few days. And my take... I saw a forlorn people, people who are not exactly enthusiastic, and uh, asking questions around. Even if there were no words against Mimiko, there were no favorable com comments about him either. And as I was just talking to Jide now, um, just about two weeks ago, Somebody called me from Akure, and he made some disparaging remarks. And this is somebody that I believe is very close to the power structure in Ondo. And for him to have said that, I knew that there was going to be a serious problem. For And then, of course, then Mr. Jimo Ibrahim now came along and further spoiled the whole thing. My take is this. I'm sure Mr. Abimiko now knows that no condition is permanent. Is permanent. Mm. That you are loved by people may not mean that tomorrow they will still love you, especially if you don't do. Remember last year, he sent his deputy out in somewhat a criminal's uh, circumstances. Some people are bitter about that, and they have not forgotten. Mm. They have not spoken about it, but who knows how much damage that had caused. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now, Mimiko has sent in his congratulatory message. And um, it was rather a mature statement. I suppose, mm -hmm. are you surprised that that has come from the opposing camp? Well, I'm not too surprised. Before, before you continue <laughs> with that thought, we have another caller. Good evening. Hello. Yes, good evening. Let's have yeah. your contribution very quickly. Okay, I got to congratulate Mr. President for the victory we had in the state. And then I said, I have to be I hear him just now, I hear him mention that I said that we are saying that we are We can't make out what uh, he's saying. Please make another attempt to. Uh, Call. Perhaps uh, the line will be clearer. Go ahead. Yeah, there are two things, two ways I, I'm, I'm trying to look at it. One, the um, Akeridola and Mimiko, they might be in this different um, political parties, but I know that they are friends, you know. And um, two, because he knows that he might likely, you know, um, not have the political weight again. After losing this, um, after losing this election, he needs to align one way or the other. But, but what does this say about um, his um, boy? Let, let me borrow the words of Jide now. You know, if you because look, if, Jagere has said that mm, the camp is studying the election result, okay. and then the PDP would, the Ondo PDP, well, their faction would would, would, would take a decision mm. afterwards. We must take a, a break at this point. You'll have the time to respond to that after the break. Stay with journalist Hangout. We'll be right back.
I know of the fact that they have an army of unemployed and I had promised them that we'll set out almost immediately to see how we create jobs for the unemployed. Uh, and in doing that, we had made up our mind that we are going to go back to basics. And that is that we are going to concentrate on agriculture. We plan to get a number of machineries at least to make sure that the lands are plowed and uh, people cannot cultivate as much as uh, agricultural products that are peculiar to their own localities. Uh, we had had discussions before now with uh, artisans and co. We are going to get so many of our youth to learn a particular trade so that with that, with, with, with the education they have and uh, time they spend learning the trade, by the time they come out, the government is going to support them. I'm sure that they become entrepreneurs and become self-employed and thereafter employ others. We do not have industries in other states. And we're going to focus on it that we try and as, as much as possible to attract people who are prepared to establish industries that will create jobs for our teaming unemployed. So this is going to be a major priority. Uh, the civil servants have not been paid for months. The issue of their salaries will have to be addressed. And, uh, and they make sure that uh, we have a very varied civil service trained that, that we can rely on. Right? They are the live wire of any government anyway. So a number of things have to be done about that. The governor-elect of Ondo State, Rotimi Akiridulu, in uh, a speech that appears to be um, talking about his plans for the people of Ondo State. Let's hope that uh, you know he is able to back up words with action in the next few months. As we go back to um, the comment you were making on Mimiko's um, uh, congratulatory message to Akiridulu. Yeah, like, like I was still saying, Jagede might have his own plans. But Mimiko has already congratulated his friend, who happens to be Akiri Dulu. I am very sure because I know Itayo is not a politician. He was just brought into the fray for him to be, just become the governor. I've seen him and the people that, some of my friends who work with uh, Mimiko actually confirm that he's just someone who loves the people and the people love him. But he's not a politician politician because I'm not sure he will have that capability for him to begin to go through the process of judiciary and going to the Supreme Court, Appeal Court, and even now, from the way the judiciary is, when once INEC declares um, the results of the election, it is very difficult, it will be very difficult for you to win in the courts. From what I've seen so far, starting from what happened in Rivers at the Supreme Court, Akwai Bowman and the rest. So I, I think he, he uh, Mimiko <coughs> will just tell him, you know what, just forget about this court case. Olushola okay, has already congratulated Akiri Dolu and is moving forward. The next thing is, he's saying he has already told the supporters, let's join hands, if possible, with this government. If where we advise the government, this new government to advise, everything has to be about the Ondo people mm. or Ondo states. Now, let's make progress. The election observers have identified vote buying and uh, the compromise of some security operatives are some of the things that characterize this election. But then again, they say this, these high points are not enough to have undermined the election. Jude, if these factors didn't, what would undermine an election and uh, make it a judge to be free and fair? Well, um, vote buying is against um, the provisions of the Electoral Act. And it's stated clearly there that you cannot um, buy people's votes on election day. So it's one of the crimes that you can commit uh, on election day. It's one of the malpractices, you know, identified um, in the Electoral Act. It's um, symptomatic of our underdevelopment that politicians will be sharing money to people, you know, on election day. It's, it's like uh, it's now 
a way of life here. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like um, breathing in and breathing out mm -hmm. for us now <clears throat> that this must happen. And it is usually the, the, the group that is um, outspent that complains. If you vote 10 million or 10 billion to spend on election day and your opponent brings 15 billion, chances are that you will defeat him. Because another thing that makes it possible is that you see the cubicle that supposedly um, makes our election to look like a secret ballot. But it does not protect you. People still get to see who you are voting for. So once you are given money, the person who gave you the money is watching yes. out, trying to see who you vote for. And if you take your life seriously, <laughs> once you've taken that money, you must just go ahead and don't print uh, against the party that, that, that has bought your that vote. Has yes. your conscience. And although we had that, people were saying, the Bofun Wako Sebe, vote for us and cook your soup, <laughs> you know? And there are videos, there are videos in, uh, of this, uh, of somebody being chased away, a, a party supporter being chased away as he was trying to uh, buy people's votes and other, give people money on the queue. It happened also in Benin. There is no election that we, 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 we conduct in Nigeria where politicians don't give people money. They give money to their supporters and those supporters on election, they position themselves, usually with the so-called security uh, operatives watching and doing nothing, you know? So when I see them, the other day, the, the police uh, yeah, uh, director of operations yeah, was saying okay. that he will freeze people. How many people were freezed in, uh, in uh, Ondo? He said, if you have five, more than 5,000 5, around with you, how many people were freezed? So he was just boasting and talking absolute nonsense. At the end of the day, on election day, po the police look their way. That's what the uh, observers election are observers. saying. Mm -hmm. The police look their way while politicians had the field day giving people money on the queue. This underdevelopment, these symptoms of underdevelopment must stop. It puts me to shame as a Nigerian that in this age and time, we continue to buy people's conscience on election day. I've given the example of the South Africans. ANC was roundly defeated in the municipal elections, even in communities where the great anti-apartheid heroes uh, came out oh, came out from Nelson Mandela Bay. They were defeated. We must have a situation, we must create a situation whereby when leaders fail us, we can remove them seamlessly through the ballot box. But the way it is now, even if a leader is unpopular, if they roll out billions of naira and on election day they shell it out for people on the queue. Nigerians, because they are already pauperized, because they are, they, they are broke, because they don't know when their next meal, where their next meal will come from, they will vote even for their oppressors. It's a shame. We can't continue to oil our shackles. But, but, but really, shouldn't we... Do we have the right to complain? Because media commentary encourages the electorate to collect the money and then vote their conscience. And then this code of silence for um, observers and reporters who go out on election day to observe the election, they actually see these things going on. But when they come on platforms like this, they cannot say it is this political party that went about distributing money and other forms of uh, materials to induce voters. Can we, can so, we have so, a situation? We have the right to can we have a situation whereby the voter is shielded? I mean, look at the cubicle is just as high as this. Mm -hmm. So anybody with a neck a bit long can actually pee, um, see, uh, peep into uh, what you are doing. That is the thing. If it was maybe you go into an enclosed area. It is now between you and your God who you vote for. But well, that's not the situation now. People can see who you are voting for. And if you vote against that candidate whose agent has given you money, then your life is at risk. Yes. Nikon, you have because, any thoughts? Because I've, see, I've, I've gone to, I remember in 2011, yeah, I covered the election somewhere in the South South. Uh, in your home state, <laughs> <Yeah. Aquibo. laughs> the What happened was that 
the then governor actually budgeted monies, about 300,000 each in each polling unit. And with uh, bags of rice and salt, because there uh, are people you be know, distributed on election on day. Election day. <laughs> so <laughs> when once you vote, they know that, okay, you have voted um, the PDP. Okay, they will fine. check it. They will check it. Mm -hmm. Then they will tell you, so yeah, how is this, this way. Ballot? They will now tell you, take this way. While you are going that way, you are going to collect your money, your small rice, and your salt. So it is, it is more like we are on the development of the mind, and we everything Even that concerns everything <laughs> because when once I, I remember that particular local government I went to, I saw people sitting there and they were eating rice just after voting. And cooked, when, is it cooked rice? Cooked rice. They were eating cooked rice. Of course, rice. they were eating. Oh, you after know, voting for them, they will serve you cooked rice. They serve you cooked rice. If you don't vote for them, you don't get the cooked rice. You don't get it. You know, so you can you, you understand <laughs> your what state. I, in my state. So that's how cheap some consciences are. So that is, that is to yeah, tell well, you how the thing is. It, it, I think yeah, it tells you <laughs> the level of poverty and that the failure of governance. Because if governance was successful uh, and you enhance the economic uh, well-being of, of, people, of the people. citizens, mm -hmm. you cannot insult them. They won't be that cheap. They won't be mm -hmm. that cheap. But when they are reduced to nothingness, you know, when about 120 million Nigerians are living below one one dollar per day, that's that's ridiculous. That's terrible. Mm. And, and there's b before we go, I must mention this: a new lexicon has entered election rigging in Nigeria, which is preloaded. Um, what do they call them now? The machines. machines card reader machines, preloaded yeah. card reader machines. Okay. The director of the Olusholoki campaign organization okay. was saying it on television that um, he was uh, alleging anyway. So if it's true, that's a new strategy of rigging an election. That because is, is when the voters pro come pro pro and try to yeah. thumb, thumb print, it has already... Um, it gives you the other party. The same way mm -hmm. that happened to Trump in America. People were um, thumping for Clinton. And that is the election before the November 8th election. And it was going <laughs> to, the other way. to the other way. Yeah. You mean when you... You, you, you turn print, print the uh, okay, card reader. Okay, card for reader. example now. No, do you turn print on the card reader? You don't. No, the, no. the card, re the card know, reader reads the, the, the PVC. It, it, reads it, the PVC. Mm -hmm. it reads the PVC. Yes. And then it's been programmed, calibrated to just register um, the other person. You understand. So that's that. Maybe we talk about it. Uh, okay. yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so we need it's to understand more, that it's more of a technical, yeah. technical thing, which uh, electronic rigging. Yes, rigging. you know, electric. <laughs> well, that's how it's been on Journalist Hangout today. Why not join us again tomorrow for another interesting edition of the program? You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at TVC News TV. I am Bukola Samuel Wenimo. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria.